Hey guys, I'm Tim. I'm Bob. I'm Mike. I'm Calico Jack. Woo! This is Board Game Rundown, and today we are going to do a preview for the Pirate Republic, the Africa Gambit. Uh, so the Pirate Republic, Africa Gambit, is a second edition uh, with more stuff. 2.5 maybe? Yeah. 2.5. Definitely changes a lot of things from the original Pirate, Re Pirate Republic game. Uh, like there's some things that there's just some aspects of that game that are completely not in this. Mm -hmm. uh, this does also present a uh, campaign style option uh, for you while you're playing. We have a prototype, so not everything is finished, you know, so we will speak to some of our our feelings about uh, components, but they are not final. Mm -hmm. So just be ready for that. In this game, basically, uh, you're going to have like a global mission. You're going to have personal missions that you're trying to complete. And uh, uh, and so yeah, you're gonna you're gonna play through, you're you're gonna keep taking turns until you finish a round, and then once you finish the round, uh, you pass the command token, you check for the end of game. If not, then you keep going. That's the whole game. Yep. We're done. No. <laughs> uh, so the round though, actually, it, it it it's got a lot going on. So there is first a uh, tidings phase. So you're going to draw a tidings card. Uh, and these cards are really cool because they, they're going to do a bunch of different things throughout the game. And we love multi-purpose cards, right? Uh, it's going to tell you initially there is a, there's a country uh, on there. You're going to have a letter of marquee from that country this round. Uh, so that means those ships will not be aggressive unless you start a fight with them, mm -hmm. which you may want to because that's a way to get an achievement. Uh, and then it's also sort of going to give you like a global modifier that might be a one one off or it could be for a, like a whole round effect. And they definitely vary. The other thing that, it, that we use these cards for is for spawning, like determining uh, to like spawn ships uh, where events might happen. And then there's also combat modifiers on the bottom, which are really cool and can really swing combat one yeah. way or the other for better or for worse drastically but initially you're gonna have the one you draw that's you're really just using it for that top half and then as uh, you need to figure out where to spawn stuff or combat that's gonna happen you're gonna use other car your cards further down in the deck as you as you do because you want to keep that one modifier up there the whole time uh, then once it's uh, your turn, you're going to roll that tidings die. And this Chunky. bad boy is going to uh, ruin <laughs> well, your day. It, could. <laughs> it really could. Uh, so normally at the beginning of the game, you're going to have like three base movements. So you're going to start your turn with three base movement. And then this tidings die can give you a plus one or two. It could give you a minus one uh, to your movement. It could spawn the slaver ships and the merchant ships. Uh, or if they're already on the board, they're going to move. So there's going to be a slave ship that moves through here. And the good news is you can kill it and sink it and free the slaves. So that's a nice thing to do. And that's mm -hmm. also an achievement. Then there's also the treasure ships and they sail along. And if it gets to the gold part, it's going to get a, up. gain a second ship. So there's more rewards for, for going at, uh, after them, attacking them and stuff like that. Sinking ships is going to give you swagger, which is going to allow you to hit these uh, level Points. thresholds. Uh, they can also give you these reputation tokens, which you can use to modify cards, and they uh, can enhance your actions or allow you to do actions. Uh, there's also the white lookout and the red lookout. The white lookout means that the uh, a, a Navy ship or a pirate hunter ship is going to come after you. It's going to be the closest one. If there's not one on the board, you're going to draw one from the Navy stack. And that bad boy is going to bust in there and, and attack you. If you have the white one, you can spend a movement to sail away because you saw it coming. Uh, but you do start your turn with one less movement. But, you know, that's better than the alternative. If you get the red one, you've got to fight it. And that ship will have initiative. Uh, we'll get into combat in a minute because that's its whole other thing. Once you've done that, you basically, you're going to have a hand of four cards from your own deck and you are going to play cards and spend your movement until you decide you're done. Uh, if you have any cards remaining in your hand when you decide to pass, you have to discard at least one of them. And then, it, and then you draw up to four cards and the next player will start their turn. They will roll the tidings die. Same thing, right? Everything goes around. Uh, some of the actions you can do that you can move, right? So it's one space per spot unless you are moving up into these extra areas here. And this just this just like 
shortens the map so it, it and sh and represents like headwinds and currents and stuff so it, it'll cost two to come in this way because two again extra. the currents two yeah. extra movement uh and four extra movement to go get uh that way because you're sailing against the current but you are able to you know it does if you go in a loop it is cheaper easier to move um theoretically theoretically <laughs> you can spend a reputation token or three movement to scout a face down ship which means you can flip it over uh in an adjacent territory if you sail into it you're going to see what it is uh mm -hmm. if it is a pirate ship it is going to attack you uh if it is a navy ship it probably will attack you unless there's a letter of marquee uh any um Slaver ships will attack you and the pirate hunters will attack you uh so if it's a merchant or a treasure ship they're gonna leave you alone uh, unless you decide to fight them. Uh, I so, don't think the slavers attack you. Oh, the slavers may not. You may have to initiate Correct. initiate right. combat with that. Uh, you can also scout one of the ports. Uh, so you draw a land tile, you put it out there, and then that is going to tell you what it does. Or you could just attack it blindly, flip the thing, and uh, pre prepare to get your world rocked, <laughs> potentially. Um, other things you can do, you can boast. So you can, uh, if you are at a pirate haven... Uh, you, which is a friendly space to a pirate, uh, which I believe Nassau is always a pirate haven because it does have the Jolly Roger there or any anyone where uh, somebody has defeated a territory, right? Or no, that's a pirate controlled territory. Yep. If you are on one of the ones with the red Jolly Roger, you can place your token and create a pirate haven. That costs you a reputation token. Mm -hmm. You can do a rest action, which I'll explain in a moment. And you're also now able to boast at these locations. And boasting will allow you to select, draw two, keep one personal mission. Uh, these are good. They're gonna help you get more points, but they are worth negative points at the end of the game if you do not complete them. Uh, then we just talked about establishing a uh, pirate haven. You turn a neutral land area into, into your area, and then you can do a free rest for that. Uh, resting is super cool because it will allow you to heal one damage off of your ship. You can have two before you sink um, or when you get to you sink. Yep. And then uh, you can reset any friendly ship tokens you may have. And then you get to add a card to your hand from your discard pile. So you shuffle your discard pile, take one randomly, add it to your hand. Um, another thing, another thing you can do at a pirate haven uh, is to declare infamy. So you're going to use the cards from your hand, like crew cards uh, or elite cards, and then any of the ship or land tokens that have the infamy tokens on them the or the combat modifier banners on them, and you spend those up. You need to spend three to gain it, at least three yeah, to for, gain for one. For every three you spend, you can buy one. Thank you. That's the best as way to say it. As long as you have the command enough, high, high to, enough to, to be able to hold, hold it. it yeah. Uh, and that's basically everything you can do on your turn. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot going on. And then what's going to happen is when you draw up to, to your hand limit, the, uh, when the commander gets to where the, that person cannot draw any more cards. So for example, Mike, that's going to signify that this will be the last turn in the round. So everybody's going to get one more turn to finish out the round. Yep. And then we will reset. You check for uh, game end, uh, the player with the lowest swagger would become the commander again uh if there is a tie the previous commander uh chooses who uh becomes the commander and then you do the tidings and you do that you know all spawn that, new ships all that if there's not enough. yeah if there's not enough ships on the board you're gonna spawn new ships uh you do have levels here so when you hit these thresholds uh you're going to have these are variable uh, things that can happen. So we're randomly, you know, you put them out and that's like a bonus thing, but there's a, uh, a captain's den. So you're going to draw a card, draw two, keep one. So you're going to add a card to your deck that way. Uh, and then you might get the extra thing. And then you're going to get initiative against all merchant ships. Super nice. Uh, really handy. Um, level three is going to give you initiative versus the ports. Uh, your hand size is increased. Uh, level four, you're going to draw four of these cards and keep two. Uh, when you gain them, they do go to your discard pile. Uh, but you also get initiative against pirate ships. Very important. Level five, you get to uh, increase one of your stats. And you also get initiative against all naval ships. Uh, really powerful. Level six is you get initiative against the pirate hunters. They're super tough. And the forts, uh, which are also super tough. Your hand size goes to six. And then whatever these variables are right in addition to that so this like allows you to add extra cards for uh company combat uh you can rest um gives you a rest action 
This is just you gain six uh, reputation tokens. Super powerful. You gain an elite card, gain a crew card, and increase a stat. These are all great. They're all, these are all really good things to hit. Super important to know also when you pass that threshold. So you'll see on the board, there are, there's one, two, three, and these are closer together down here and then they get further apart. When, uh, if you were to die or get captured, you are going to drop down to the to the last threshold you crossed, right? So if if Bob was over here and he had 45 and he gets sunk, he's dropping down to 38. So he's not losing any of these abilities. You basically uh, start that level over you again. Start that level over again. The bummer though, is that you will lose a ship stat, uh, you know, one of your stats that you've increased, uh, but you do get to spawn in a location uh, where it's either neutral or a haven, right? Yep. yep. And then combat is uh, is pretty interesting because what you're going to do is if you have initiative, which is great, uh, you get to use your broadsides mm -hmm. and try to sink the ship uh, using your cannons. If you cannot sink the ship using your cannons, you're going to take a damage, but you're going get to in, get into close combat and now you're going to be going up against that stat. And you're going to play cards from your hand that are going to give you bonuses or maybe even crew cards that you have out in front of you or friendly ship tokens that will give you bonuses against those things. Also, if it does have that banner at the top, you are going to draw a tidings card and then implement whatever it says on the bottom, right? So that is, it looks like you lose a prestige or take a wound, or Oof. not prestige, a reputation token or yep. take a wound reputation. on that. Uh, if it's on the green, if it's a, if it's a green banner, uh, whoa, those are all bummers. Ooh, draw uh, those for Dan. Yeah, Dan. Here we go. This one's great. That one, it's a green banner, so it's going to benefit you. And that's double broadsides. So you like come out like gunning. Uh, and, it, and that's the only thing you use that card for. You disregard everything else on that card. It just goes to the bottom of the deck or the discard pile. We didn't really have a place for a discard pile, so we were putting it on the bottom of the deck. Um, but yeah, so that, those are things that can happen in combat. Uh, and uh, if you don't have initiative, you have to have enough movement to... Uh, if you, if you have enough movement to match their broadsides, you do not take any damage, you go right into close combat. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, you if you have at least half, you will take one damage, and then whatever the remaining uh, value of that broadsides is gonna get added to their close combat, and then you are gonna play cards from your hand to try to defeat that uh, what token, whatever it is, ship or thing. If you don't have enough, you, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have enough movement to evade the broadsides, even half of it, you get sunk, captured. Uh, so then all that bad stuff happens. Uh, if you can't take that second wound, you get sunk or captured, so on and so forth. That's kind of the quick and dirty on how all of that works. Uh, they do have some nice flow charts and player aids. Again, this is a prototype, so hopefully, uh, you know. That stays in. That stays in. There's more of it. Uh, yeah, that's in a very, very brief nutshell, mm -hmm. uh, what uh, the the Pirate Republic, uh, the Africa Gambit is. There's a lot of rules, a lot of minutia. There's a lot of stuff going on in this game. Um, it says, what? Two uh, to three hours. Two to three, three hours on the box? Uh, at least. At least. At, at least, least, especially in your first, first couple game. games. Oh my. Because, uh, yeah, we put, we put a lot of hours into this and uh, yeah. There's a lot of game here, and and so, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, this is a sandbox pirate game. You want to be able to level up. You want to be able to do stuff. I wouldn't call it a deck building game because it's yeah. It, the, when that you're only adding minimal. a handful of cards right. at a time, like mm -hmm. a deck building game to me is like that's what I'm doing. I'm, right. I'm, you know, that's it is a very small aspect of this game. This is very much like a, a go out and explore. Right. It has a deck improvement element. Yes. There you that's, go. A, that's a very nice way to say it. <laughs> You're saying that because how many cards did you guys get to add to your hand throughout today's one. game? I added three because I was a high enough level to where I gained. Yeah, one. I added one. One. Uh, but anyways, let's let's go around and, and, and just kind of give our thoughts and, and share like kind of what we think and our impressions on this. And I will just start with you, Bob. Uh, sure. Um, I think that there are some really good bones in this game, like the whole sandbox, getting your pirate ship, building it up, um, going, we haven't done a lot of the mission to mission, um, but you do have to like reset a lot of your stats, which is a little unfortunate going to mission to mission to me. Mm -hmm. Like when I feel like I'm doing something campaign style like that, I'm using all that time to build Improving. my ship up and improve my, yeah, improve my ship. Um, 
So I'd have to see how that kind of plays out as you go. Um, I think it could really um, speed the game up if there was some sort of a um, quick start type of a thing. Um, kind of like, you know, Abomination did a thing like that where there's like a, a developer thing where you start a little bit faster or you, you got a few more stats or you can like maybe spend a token to gain initiative because that initiative is so important. When you go to fight the battles, you either have to have a ton of movement to not take damage or you have to have the initiative. Because you have initiative, then you're just, you could just spend uh, strike fear and not worry about any damage or you just spend a bunch of cannons, which it's easy to get cannons, and you just blow them out of the water. And otherwise, if you don't have that initiative, man, it's it's a struggle to get a lot of movement because you know you could roll that minus one, and you only got two movement, and you can't bank it to move on. You're gonna reset basically to mm -hmm. that three every time, plus whatever you know bonuses you have on your ship, and then whatever you get on the, on the die roll. Those minus ones early really hurt because you mm -hmm. can't even you can't scout, scout then. Yeah, yeah. you can yeah. spend your reputation token to right. scout, but and, then and then sometimes there's some of your cards will have some additional mm -hmm. movement on too, which which is helpful. But um, I think maybe early also we didn't realize how important it was to team up. Yeah. Uh, so you're gonna want to do that especially early on because not only is it like one of your achievements to help you, you know, build your ship up faster? Because every time you unlock one of these achievements, you're going to get to, you know, move up and, and upgrade your ship. Uh, but it's going to help you take out some more of these like pirate ships and um, ports and things like that. And because, yeah, some of those are super tough. And like, mm -hmm. Um, wait, if you keep if you if you keep rolling the uh, the white face on that die, or even the red one, you know, and there's like one, you know bad trip out there <laughs> we he had, just he yeah he just kept jumping and teleporting all over the board and it was just so tough to deal with that and uh, we had a naval ship on. with 12 broadsides right yeah. so you need six movement just, just to, to not just die to get, yeah, and that's yeah. still to get hurt yeah and you still get hurt yeah <laughs> it's just to not die yeah yeah uh, i mean now granted if you roll the one well, the white one you can spend one movement right away and get away from it right. but if you want to try to deal with that ship or if you're in the same spot as somebody else and somebody else brings that ship to you you're like ah you know because then or you roll away. the red one and yeah, you or get you're, you, yeah, you can't get away. You You're stuck fighting it. Yeah, so it's it's tough, man. It's, it takes a lot going on. Um, the elite cards are, are, are super strong. Uh, I think Mike was the only one that was able to recruit one of those, um, but he didn't really get much of a I chance. I was going to, to recruit it. one, and then Bob told me I was cheating. <laughs> correct, because <laughs> you were trying to use the wrong thing because I misspoke <laughs> earlier when I explained it to Mike, although Mike did pay the correct uh, yeah, resources yeah. for it. Um, something else that, that you can do is, uh, while a lot of these cards do have the... Um, reputation like boost at the bottom that you can spend to get the stronger effect out of it the elite cards you can also spend crew cards basically and so like i feel like an icon on that card would really like help Let you, you remember that, that you because could. you can't do that with your normal cards but you can do it with the elite cards so if they had that little crew flag on the bottom then that would remind you that oh yeah i can spend that crew card to help get that which speaking of crew cards we never got any, none of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had a hard time, you know, figuring out like none of the the ports or anything that we flipped over gave that as a reward. Yeah, um, nobody was able to get their crew uh, max out to gain the free card. There are tidings um, cards that we've are, seen yeah, that you could. There are a few ways that we saw, but not many. This this uh, most recent game that we played, we, we didn't get it. Right. I would almost suggest like going through instead of completely randomizing the benefits, and maybe. Um, picking out the right ones, like uh, maybe put the crew one first, or, or you get the level up, and then, or um, mm -hmm. just picking out ones that are a little bit more useful early on in the game to help you get going and, and get the. Because you can spend, you know, an hour or two just trying to get your ship out of port, basically, and, and actually be able to do something like effective with it. Because sometimes you end up with those feel bad turns. Where you're like, well, there's I'm surrounded by ships, I can't go anywhere. I have not enough movement to, to run away from them, so I just pass until I hopefully draw something that gives me more movement or roll the plus two to help me get away from those ships. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah, yeah, it was. There's a lot going on here. The, there's a, a ton of minutia, like like Tim was saying, um, and getting a lot of those nuances right can be super difficult. Um, there is a player aid, which is helpful. Uh, a mm -hmm. few more clarifications on there would be would be really helpful. Saying like, oh yeah, you can boast. You do this. Okay, well it doesn't say you have to spend the token. In the book it does, but if you're just looking at this, it doesn't remind you that you have to spend the token to do that. Mm -hmm. And just with so many small things going on, it you need those reminders to, to remind you that you can do those kinds of things. Yeah, because the reference card says action phase in detail, but it's actually missing some of the details that you need <laughs> to perform the action. Like scout tokens, reveal a face down token for uh, one of these tokens and three movement. Okay, where? Yeah. Uh, is that adjacent? It is adjacent, but the action phase in detail doesn't explain that. The reference card could use a lot more clarification to help turn sequence a lot. Mm -hmm. 
Are we ready to pass yep, the yep, mic? Go ahead, Mike. Go for it, Mike. You're in there. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I, I will comment on the looks uh, because I love this map. Uh, the yeah, the map's green. awesome. Yep. Of the board, the art on the cards, yep. the art on the tiles. I think it's fantastic. The mm -hmm. look of this game is amazing. I can if he's good. I really, yeah. Uh, I really just like looking at this board and talking about like the locations on it. Uh, and I enjoyed that aspect. I like meandering around the board and mm -hmm. trying to find, you know, ships that Ways I can to cut attack. Through here, over here. But, yeah. you know, to your point about some of the feel bad moments, as I got past, um, you know, initiative two, which was beyond eight points, I think I was sitting at 18 points. And I had a mission card that told me to go get a, uh, basically get five- um, Strike fear. Strike fear in Charlestown. And I thought, oh great, uh, I'll, I'll go right for that. So I went there and then that turn, two pirate ships spawned on me. Mm -hmm. Now, my mistake was I should have scouted to learn what was there. But because those two pirate ships showed up and they automatically are aggressive, I died. Mm -hmm. And when I died, I lost 10 points. I lost um, a one stat. of the hand, I think. Yeah, yeah, I lost a card. Uh, the, I lost one of my Elites. levels yep. uh, there. And I never recovered from that. And that felt terrible. And by not getting to tier three in the initiative, I felt stuck in the end game and never uh, the mid game and never got to end game, which was having high initiative and being able to dominate some of these areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never got strong enough to be able to deal with the fortresses whatsoever. Yeah, no. mm -hmm. I never got strong enough at all to deal with any of the Navy ships. I never really recovered from falling back to initiative two. And mm -hmm. so what ended up happening for several of us is we're meandering around the board, scouting things and hoping to reveal something we could actually handle. And instead it was a bunch of stuff that was too strong for us. Then we're like, well, okay, let's try grouping up. And we were still only grouping up against the weakest stuff on the board. Mm -hmm. We, I, and some of us really struggled to get strong enough to take out more powerful enemies. And that didn't feel good. Uh, it, it, it sort of felt helpless at times. Well, I think like, that's where the initiative, like if if there was a little bit of an easier way to get an initiative early in the game, mm -hmm. I think that fixes a lot of those problems. I'm not saying right. that that's the magic bullet, but I do feel like that, and that was the thing we discussed a lot, yeah. but I'm sorry to interrupt Mike, uh, just throwing no, that out No, that's a fair point. Uh, you know, the other, uh, the other part of that, um, the feel bad moment was that, you know, here I was trying to get the strike fear icons in my deck and then I had them, but then we got back around to the commander. And when that happens, you take all of your deck, you shuffle it yeah, up yeah, and then you draw cards, a new right. hand. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't have any of the strike fear cards that I needed. So I got to, I, I had to wait keep to dealing more hands and then like multiple rounds go by and I'm, I'm still not able to do anything with Charlestown. And even when I did, <laughs> I got two points for it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it took me almost the entire game to do it mm -hmm. so there's a good game here and i think a lot of people will enjoy what this has to offer uh but it felt like the game was resisting me trying to progress mm -hmm. and that doesn't always feel good dan hi <laughs> at the end of the day this game is a combat focused sandbox pirate game with a mission end game. So that's what you're getting yourself into. And I think that if that interests you, I think you will like the game overall. I agree with the basic sentiment Bob gave that there are some really good bones here. I really like the idea of this game here. It's just that a lot of times in games, what you're looking for is quality of life decisions. And this game almost goes for inferiority of life decisions. They literally say, oh, that's what players would like, do the opposite. Oh, that over there, that would really help players. Let's do the opposite. And they're clearly 
um, blatant choices. It, the designer wanted these to be decisions. And so I'm not gonna fault them for making that, but it does make it uh, feels bad very often when you're when you're trying to accomplish certain goals and do certain things and, and you feel like, dang man, it is so hard to do this thing that feels like it should be so simple. And a lot of that comes down to quality of life things. I have a couple things I'll throw out there that um, are just, First impression opinions, I do not have as many hours into the game as some of these other players here, um, but just my some of my initial thoughts. Again, overall, I actually enjoyed the game quite a bit. I, I, I like open sandbox games where you just kind of do whatever, and I think that's a mindset you have to be in because, so we have personal goals here. Um, you have to have completed a personal goal in order to complete the final mission and, and win at the end of the game and everything, right? So, and as a player right as people who play a lot of board games we see this personal goal and we see travel this location do this thing okay boom and we set off right to it because it's just like it just seems intuitive and easy and it's just not you just have to understand this is a sandbox game you are meant to grind you are meant to take your time you're meant to slowly level up and when you approach hour three maybe go try to do your personal goal right like and that's just not a mindset you initially have maybe when you're jumping into a sandbox game you have to understand that there's a lot of big sandbox games like that that you can't you know, when you're playing Zaya, when you're playing uh, mm -hmm. Western Legends, you can't just start the game and go, I'm going to go do that thing. It's just like, no, you're not strong enough, buddy. Yeah. Uh, and this game has that as well. And I don't think that's so much a fault of the game as much as maybe a fault of some of the marketing of the game. Perhaps people aren't uh, including us, but also some other things I've seen online. People just aren't going in with the exact correct mindset sometimes. And that is totally fine. But then there are some quality of life things that are really easy to change that maybe aren't the right idea for balancing opinions or for balancing reasons, but they're just maybe what I think. Um, I, I do think that this is really cool to have in game. You have these variety little level ups right here. But unfortunately in a sandbox game, you have a very unbalanced thing that happens here where the order here like could you could just have something immediately that doesn't matter and have something really late that you really need hey you need to get to level six before you have this thing that seems like you should have it immediately that can kind of suck meanwhile initiative is the most important thing in the game i mean it is game changing when you start yeah. getting initiative which makes this game suffer a little bit from rich get richer i don't necessarily hate that in a sandbox game it makes sense in a sandbox game more than a normal yeah, type I mean, of you hero level or anything up, you should be yeah, able to, you should be rewarded for yeah, being you should stronger do more so i don't yeah. dislike that um but i think that this uh, initiative system feeds into that a little too much because of how important you it is. You need some mitigation. I personally would just swap this system around. I would I would have these set and have a more balanced set of cool bonuses that you get here and have the initiatives set by the players when they level up. When I hit level two, let's say I'm focusing marketing ships. I can say I am now taking initiative on all marketing ships merchants. and now uh, yeah. merchants, sorry. And now whenever I fight a merchant, I can do that, but maybe Mike is really focusing on the pirates, getting the better rewards, and has a personal goal that focuses pirates. Mike wants to take initiative against pirates. Or maybe there's no more merchant ships on the board because somebody killed them all before <laughs> yeah, you Yeah, or you something like anything. that happens. Because again, it's a sandbox game. People are yeah. going to go do stuff and mess up no, all I your like plans. I like that idea. Um, I like that so idea. So, again, I don't know balance-wise what it would do to the game. You're the designer. You're smarter than me. Um, but I, I think that having the initiative be something that players can choose the order they receive of, at least to a point, yeah, maybe don't let them get initiative against the royal ships immediately or something, right? Of course, mm. it would do them no good because they don't have enough broadsides to yeah. fight them anyway. Yeah. But I'm just saying mm. between like these three, maybe let us pick the order as we level yeah. up because hitting level two is pretty easy. But unless you have a lot of merchant ships to then focus and level up or a lot of really weak ports, Getting to level three is hard. It is very hard. Um, and so speeding up that process in any way, whether it is a more balanced version of these, like one of these literally is level up your ship twice. You know how crazy it is to reach level one or level two technically, which again is pretty easy, and immediately gain plus two movement every turn? That is crazy powerful. Huge. Compared to you can play a second card in company combat. Yeah, I mean, that's cool if we stick together. It is powerful but it's not nearly as good as leveling up yourself because Bob getting two cards or me getting two extra s speed and broadside, you know, for the tying in the combat I'm saying, that is way better in my opinion. <laughs> so having a more balancing there and having a more interesting system here, I think would sway a lot of my concerns for quality of life. Just being able to get that initiative early on. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it being super random and stuff like that w with the die um, or with, uh, at one point, Tim was uh, uh, in a company with me and 
I was fighting, and Tim gave me initiative, and we went to a fight, and then this card gave the enemy initiative back. Uh oh, yeah. <laughs> you know and that sucked, but I don't, I don't mind I mean, that. At least it made for an interesting combat, right? You know, yeah. I, and, I agree. And, and I almost still pulled it off. You know, it was still a good fight. Um, I did wind up dying. Um, but I don't know. Uh, my overall things is I, I, I love almost every component in this game, actually, even for prototype. I, I think the art, the components, uh, the, the uh, graphic design, I think it's all fantastic here. Um, I guess a couple small things is uh, you brought up, I think fleeing is a bit too difficult mm -hmm. for how important it is. Now, again, though, initiative would change that. Once you start getting the initiative in there, you don't have to flee anymore <laughs> yeah. once you have initiative against or the Or you just guys. need enough broadsides to like draw, like push right. them off of you. Correct. Too. Right. Um, and so I think that maybe I, I wish fleeing was a little easier or that the initiative broadside system was a little bit more uh, easy early on um, is something. Go on. I, I, I kind of liked uh, Tim's idea where he was saying, you know, you spend one of these uh, reputation tokens and maybe you get uh, initiative at, you know, a higher level for everyone. Oh, OK, so I'm going to go fight a port. I'll spend a couple of extra initiative tokens to bump my initiative up for that fight. You know, so I can have oh, an okay. on it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't... Like, I understand, like, like the why they did the order. Like, okay, yeah, merchants are easier to kill, so you get an initiative right. against them first. And then those ports a little bit, and then the, a pirate ship. But if I have all this extra reputation, people have heard of me, I can spend those to gain the initiative because, you know, people are quick and fear kind of a thing. Yep. You know what I well, mean? But here's the thing is, if you look at the map, mm -hmm. We did not like this. Was some game state state. We didn't change. We didn't change any of the ports. Yeah, and if you look, all difficult ones. They're all towers. They and are. These were shuffled. These have been used in multiple games. Yep. Uh So like, and yep. we did go through maybe four or five land tokens uh, of just the ports of just the ports which are the ones with the little houses on them right so but I mean we got a lot of towers we got a lot of towers and so it does make it difficult yeah uh, I don't dislike that at all uh, when I heard you guys talking about it it was in the middle of the game and I heard you guys first discussing that I thought you were just saying that every time you got to a fight you could discard one to have initiative in that, that fight was, that, that was, was my initial pitch. idea I thought that was too easy yeah uh, that's when, why when I was I saying for it. everyone you spend you could um, bump it up a level like but, say you're level 3 sure. and you're going to fight a thing, a level six thing, you can spend three tokens to gain that initiative again. But with sure. combat being as hard as it was, yeah. anything to make <laughs> anything it a little bit easier. easier. Because yeah. later on in the game, right, so if you left this, later right. on in the game, you're not using those tokens for that anymore because you don't right. need it. You don't need it. But those tokens are also super important because they can activate better Bigger versions cards. of your card. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're very useful in that way. And I just, you know, what's one more thing like that it can make you do? And again, I even said when we were talking about it, not sure if it's broken, but I would be interested in playing that way to see, see how, how it broken works. it was. Right. Sure. Uh, go on. I'm sorry, Dan. I mean, I'm basically done. It's. I was just naming a couple small things to get in. Uh, the crew and elite cards, I think, are too difficult to get yeah. for how interesting they are. It's not fulfilling. And again, if it's kind of marketing itself as a deck builder, cough, cough, right. <laughs> slow yeah. down. Yeah. Um, but they, they are good. They are fun when you get them. They're right. interesting. Um, and part of that comes with the leveling up thing. If you could level up faster and stuff down here, then but that's fine. I think initiative fixes most of those problems, personally. Uh, just some way to increase initiative. That way, that way, my way, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, oh, the Rush level three. That was the last thing I wanted oh, to yeah, say. Rush yep. level three. Get to, do, do baby tasks. Yep. Get to level three as fast as possible. Once you're at level three, you now, and you can't go lower than level three, right? If you die, you'll go down to level three again. That's fine. But once you're at level three, merchant ships, which is okay, and ports, you now have initiative against every time, right. unless this card and five uh, cards breaks in your that. Hand. And five cards in your hand. Having initiative against ports is a game changer. You literally just start circling on the board and grinding those levels out, and it becomes. Until there's all towers on there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, sure, but hopefully, again, at that point, you've grinded enough to right. kind of get up to at least pirates. Now sure. you can grind the pirates. Fair. Like you're, the game is basically grinding whatever you're at to have initiative because initiative is game breaking. Yep. It's so important. Um, so again, I just the second I got to level three, the game opened up. I was like, okay, I'm just mm -hmm. gonna go here. I'm gonna fight this port. That's easy. After that, I'm gonna fly back here. I'm gonna heal them, and then I'm gonna well, fly. I'm, <laughs> I'm, gonna, say, what? I'm gonna ship over here, <laughs> and, heal, and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna go over there, and I'm gonna fight that port. And literally every port on the game became an easy target for me. And it was mm -hmm. just it was just choosing my battles at that point. Um, so yeah, I think that was the last thing. I guess the other thing is just to jump on Mike's thing. I do think the personal goals are way too hard for how little points they give you. Yeah. I had one that I had to spend almost an entire round and 18 movement worth of movement points in order to get two points 
Come on, that is ridiculous. Yeah, you're, spending two tur- right. you're spending a whole round for two points. Yeah, almost Which a whole like round. I did four one turns. fight, yeah. and then the rest of my turns were just mm. moving in order to accomplish the goal. That is insane. And I, and I don't know if they made the number so low because they're also negative points at the end, so if you got five mm. negative points, that would suck. But I would much rather take five negative points later than only get two points now. Yeah. Give me some points, guys. Yeah. Like So, I don't know. I, Especially at the higher levels because it gets harder to hit that yeah, next. Yeah, because, oh, there's like 20-something right. or 30 something between the next right. levels yeah drop all the way down and there yeah. was a point in time where i got very close to level three i was two away from level three mm-hmm. died went all the way back down to eight and it took it over up. an hour <laughs> to get <laughs> back, back to, to level, level three. three yeah all of these go from one to four yeah, four is nice i don't know how difficult my, it is my four one is i nice. had was worth seven. Oh my god yeah. i had to Whoa. either kill a treasure fleet uh, rescue a slave ship or kill one of the main forts, which are they're all super all difficult. Late games. That must yeah. be the only one because all these are one to four. Yeah, right. And just for example, like the four point one here is be the first player to maximize all your pirate board stats. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's first gonna player. take a long and time. And also, that's yeah. tough because when you lose a fight, you lose a or level. When you, when you die, you're gonna you lose, lose one level. of the level on your stats. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just wanted to say, finish up. Yeah, from me positive thoughts overall. I had fun playing this game. I did, but I was also just studying the minutia and studying the negative things that I thought were here and, and wondering, okay, I think that could have been done a little differently. This is a little weird. Um, most of the stuff has been brought up here, uh, but I did have fun. I liked the game. I would play again, actually, but it is definitely a mindset of this is a crazy sandbox game. Who mm-hmm. knows? I, I love Tales of the Arabian Nights. Mm-hmm. That's a game that you can play six hours and accomplish nothing the right. entire time. That's yeah. just how it works. So I don't mind this that much, but some of the decisions were like, okay, the designer did that just to hurt us. Right, right. <laughs> like, and so just go in knowing that. But yeah, mm. that's 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 my thoughts, I think. Yeah, so this game's hard. Uh, there's a <laughs> lot of difficult things. The co-op piece of it is very important. Uh, do not underestimate that, uh, especially early on in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would have liked a lot more mitigation for initiative, whatever that would, however shakes that out. shakes out. Yep. Uh, cause legit by the time, even by the time it was my turn and I went second in the first round, uh, any of the ships I could have beat were gone yeah. because captain Bob over here, uh, went around and knocked out <laughs> two merchant ships yeah, in, a, the in two the f- super close, easy merchants. I yeah. Think. He boom. went up, run over, took them out right away. Boom, boom. And so he, Bob never, we, nobody ever even got close to him. Well, Dan and I were close for a long time. And sw- I mean, and then, I passed him. Yeah. You were ahead. Yeah. We were literally like leapfrogging each other. Cause oh, like, but then Mike's you, like, you're like, I'll help you. Mike, just I give died. me two points. So I get ahead of Bob. I'm like, well, I'll help you. Mike, let me get two ahead. <laughs> That's, 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 That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. But, but early on, Mike and I struggled a lot. Yeah. Uh, and again, we did not lean into the co-op piece as much. I was trying to do the circumnavigate. And then I got screwed because there was yeah. a ship that I could not even get close to touching here. And then a pirate hunter spawned, spawned there. there. I was stuck. Yeah, three so I to literally move. threw myself into to dying. And I didn't, and I was still like, had hopes of trying to do the circumnavigate thing because maybe this ship would, well, move. I didn't even need this ship to move. I needed this ship to go or, so, you know, some way to be able to, to get past this ship. Uh, so I threw myself into a fort, just like, let's see what happens. Uh, it didn't work out. I died. Didn't matter because I was already at that threshold right. because I had died really once already. Uh, and then uh, I realized I was stuck. That pirate that pirate hunter ship wasn't moving. So I literally just got myself killed again so I could spawn in a different part of the map because I, I had mm-hmm. explored everything up here that I could, had beat a few things that I could, uh, but then, yeah, literally had to kill myself to get into a different part of the map so I could play the game again. And that was almost an hour because there's a lot of downtime between turns, mm-hmm. uh, potentially, unless you go after me uh, <laughs> in that ter- aspect. Uh, I mean, and, and that's fair because in, in the, it, and some of that is because of what makes this game really interesting. You're mat, you were really mathing out your turn. Okay, I'm gonna move here. So if I have this combat, I'm gonna do this because what happens is when you win that combat, it feels so good. When you beat those ships and it, like, and you're gaining infamy, you know, like you get, you're getting Swagger. that token. It's really fun. Well, they, you, it's infamy for them to buy oh, cards, sure, sure, sure. right? Uh, and then, you know, like there is sort of that thrill of reveal, like, oh, is this one have a banner? I wanted to attack the ones that had the banners. Right. Even if there was that negative modifier that could hit me, it's like, oh, but I love sort of that 
push your luck. Like maybe I'm going to get that good one mm -hmm. uh, because we saw some really awesome ones, you know, and I don't mind getting hosed by a card draw because that's sort of the nature of it, right? Like you, cause, cause it's going to swing both ways. Uh, but when you had a bunch of downtime, uh, that was a bummer. And I don't think anybody took excessive time uh, taking their turns, all jokes aside. Right. Uh, but I had a lot of turns where it's like, okay, I can't do anything, but I'm going to get myself killed. So, yep. all yep. right. And then literally, no joke, 20, 25 minutes later, when it's my turn again, it's like, okay, now I can do stuff. Because the other thing is, when I respawned, I spawned back, I finally got smart, spawned back near everybody else, but I was sunk. So I couldn't participate in any company yeah. battles that until I had a turn again, turn, yeah. right? But then once I was able to do that, hey, I was back in, it got interesting. And again, Dan's right. Once you hit like that level three, yeah. it does, it, it opens, opens up, up a lot. So you much. get more cards in your hand, you know, uh, you, you've got initiative over a couple of things. Uh, the only bummer is, and this is why I think you should be able to spend a token for initiative, is because... By the time I got past, or even to the Level merchants, two. we never saw any merchant yeah, we never ships saw anymore. because yeah. it, they weren't populating uh, fast enough. The way, yeah, they're just not populating fast enough. I I would have liked to have seen them spawn a little bit faster. I agree. But I, it, not the end of the world or anything, uh, because again, the other ships. Once you are able to start beating those things, they're awesome. It's really awesome. I love the achievements. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool. It really, 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 really hurts when you are not doing well at the game, you lose, and then you lose one of your ship upgrades. Right. Uh, that really hurts. Mm -hmm. It hurts a lot. Because uh, uh, they're so hard to get. They're so hard to get. Oh, it hurts. I get it. You need to have, you need to have something Penalties. that happens. Sure. Uh, but like losing all those points. It's a pretty big penalty. That felt like a pretty big penalty. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, you know, like Dan said, yeah. though, there, there's things in this game that are going to just punish you. There's you, are choices. You could almost say, like, you know, if you're already on the lowest spot and since you can't lose points, then you lose Right. If you can't lose points, lose a right. thing. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That one's I'm free. glad I came up with that. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I, also prevents the, like, well, I'm just going to throw myself against exactly. something. Well, yeah, Tim yeah. killed himself twice. Right. And yeah. he'd be like, maybe I yeah, don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, had, those. I had literally no <laughs> ship upgrades, so yeah. there was no, no negative. No it negative. was only a positive right. because it allowed me to get yeah. to the other side of the map. Yeah. I, the only thing I lost was my circumvent, right? Correct. Which I was halfway done with. Right, right. Uh, and would not have been able to complete without leveling up higher. Yeah. Uh, so, but anyways, uh, but there's so many interesting things. There's so many really good bones to this game. Mm -hmm. I love sandbox games. Uh, Dan and I played a ton of uh, Elden Ring. We do not mind grinding. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, like, and again, when you do get those rewards, it's very satisfying. It didn't happen in this game, but in the previous game we played, uh, we were getting treasure cards. Uh, and the treasure cards were really cool. Really One-time use, yeah. like, uh, and they really, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like, gave us more rewards. So I feel like there should be more ways to get treasure cards. Yeah. Uh, and not oh, just we just scenario. Have to fight all these super powerful forts. Just scenario <laughs> based. Uh, because getting a treasure card early really gave us some it did. wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, I could double my broadside against a thing. Sweet. Yeah. Even <laughs> if it's only one time, I yeah. mean, that's critical. Yeah. You know. Uh, but there's so many cool things that this game does, and uh, I'm really hoping that the coming out of the uh, prototype phase, yep. yeah, and I really hope Play it gets tweaked yeah. because if not, if I just had this as is, I'm gonna house rule a ton of stuff, and I'm still gonna play it all right. the time because I think there's a really good game here. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it you it needs sped up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I re my one takeaway is I really hope as it moves from prototype through the production phase through the Kickstarter you know he'll have comments right. and stuff yeah, from yeah. people on the uh, you know on the page I really hope initiative gets looked at that's my one thing nothing else could change and I'd say it's pretty dang good yeah. you know if just initiative gets looked at because it literally impacts the game that much well yeah. and I think um, and I think you going into your point though right when you have people play this hey this is the kind of game we're playing. Right. If you're in, buckle up, let's go. Right. Uh, now you know what you're in for. The other thing that in prototype form that this game does that I that is the worst thing for me is the way that they set up things in the rule book. Yeah. Uh, what I would call sort of the cardinal sin of, of rule books, where you have these rules all laid out, uh, but in different font, in different color, they do notes uh, that are also rules. Uh, sometimes. 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 Yeah, sometimes but not they're not. all the times. Yeah. 
Uh, so sometimes you're looking for something. Why can't I find it? Well, it's because it's in the designer note so or strategy note. tip. Yeah. But it's like, no, 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 no. Like, actually, that's a rule that's that a happens rule, all the time. Tip. <laughs> and it should just be part of the rules yeah. uh, laid out. Uh, there, and, It's very and, easily overlooked. And it's, only t- it's, it's just made tougher because there's a lot of rules. There's a mm, lot of right. minutia here. And that's not a bad thing. Mm. It's when it's laid out really well. And made very clear. It's right. not a, a sandbox thing. game has to have all that rules and and one hundred percent. They're finicky by design, right? One hundred percent. Because that, and that's what's cool about a sandbox game, right? It's 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 kind of like playing a role playing yeah, game. Yeah, you just go, wait, I can do that. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, you know. I mean, and, and the the examples are really well done, you know, and everything in here. But it just drives me nuts when they do. Uh, and they they even give you the um, action phase in detail on page twenty three. Awesome. Thank you for giving me a page number to go to yeah, for that a future really reference. Like. Love that. Mm-hmm. But there's so many things where it's like, no, this is this. So you, you know, it's like, no, just have it say, yeah. you yeah. know, in the rules. There's just that there's multiple times in the rule book where the little italicized words will just say example. And it will just give an example that does not matter at all. It's just giving an example of the rule it just described. But then there are other times we're using the exact same font in the exact same italicized manner in the same, you know, size and everything, it will it will explain a rule and then under that, using that note format, say, but with a merchant ship, right. these are the rules. Right. What? what? Yeah. That's just a rule. That's not a little italicized note. And yeah. so it does that a couple times and that is that is strange. Mm-hmm. I think there are some things that are bigger cardinal sins. <laughs> but sure. that is that is strange well, when, and should not be the case. Yeah. Like, but here's the thing is like, for example, like Okay, you're, when, so your your speech we, is italicized right now. When, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well when we when 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 we went to do the game uh last time, the, the for the first time, like I made a ton of notes. I had index cards written out where I had uh mm-hmm. page numbers, phases broke down and everything, and this was not enough. Like having gone through the whole rule book and made notes, mm-hmm. it was not enough. Um, then having another person, Bob, go through the rule book as well. And we were looking and we're both referencing stuff and referencing the notes. We came to the table. It was a much easier teach, but there was still a ton of minutia and things that needed, uh, looked clarified, up, yeah. uh, and, and clarified. And, um, so it's just, I, I feel like there's a better way. Mm-hmm. I don't always know exactly what, what the, the answer, answer is, is, but. But I feel like there's a better way. I'm not a board game designer. Uh, I'm just a board game lover. (laughs) So yeah, well, I feel like so. There's one thing I was reading. I think it was page 26, and it referenced like um, your um, haven. Uh, and the also the oh yes yeah so you have your pirate haven but you also have your pirate controlled territories and like wait a minute well, what's the difference I hadn't talked about that before and then like eight pages later it's like oh here's your here's what this is and it's like oh okay because like, I remember when I was reading it and I messaged Tim and I was like I haven't seen this before like what are they talking about and they just kept reading waiting for a response and then eight pages later it's like oh there it is I found it but it's just and there's such a, a nuanced difference between a pirate haven and a pirate controlled territory but you use the same marker for it and like and it just added a lot of confusion where there didn't need to be. Yeah, and then going back to the reference cards where mm-hmm. the action phase in detail needs the details, and that means you're going back to the rule book a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and I think that it's a good start for the player aids. There should be a player aid just for the flowchart of combat. Yeah, the flowchart is cool. The flow, this flowchart's great. Mm-hmm. It's in the middle of the book, uh, and it's it, but to it, help with the combat because there's so many paths and tricks and things going on. With do you have initiative? Do you have this? Are you spending broadside? Are you striking fear? Are you doing close quarters? Like there's just a and lot the combat going on. all makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and, and I really appreciate the intricacies of it because mm-hmm. thematically also it makes sense because if you've got to go to close quarters, well you've taken some a shots. barrage of cannons. Yeah. You know, Although cannon I fire be able to, get to shoot there. back. Yeah, I wish you didn't have to do close quarters like i really right. wish it was like a just a broadside fight thing sometimes. right yeah. I, I, I don't disagree with that yeah it just like I, use movement or broadside to get away listen right yeah. because you're shooting enough that they're like what's well, not right. mess with them as i'm gonna get away there might be like a crazy history thing where it's like you know really when pirates fought it was almost never with cannons they always got close that's awesome maybe in a game <laughs> i want to say i want to shoot that guy yeah and then he wants to shoot me back and i say ow okay i'm gonna shoot you back and then he goes okay well now we're close enough and i'm gonna board you and i go okay yeah like, that's what i want 
the fact that it's always check your speed. Uh, do you have initiative? If you don't, they get the shot off damaging you, and then it goes straight right. into combat. And your, and your broadside what? is done. Wait, I didn't get to shoot my gun. Yeah, how close yeah. were we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, so that's a little anti-thematic thing that might be for balancing that's totally fine. But, like, the whole time I was just like, man, I just want to shoot that guy. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, I think if you go, you might be, like, anti-thematic if you are a pirate history nerd. Exactly. Sure. And way into totally it. Totally sure. But yeah, sure. by general population, everybody thinks of pirates and lots of games. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. like Dan's saying, though, if you don't have initiative, your broadsides literally matter for nothing unless you have a card that can convert them into another like right. resource or whatever But yeah, it's like okay, so I'm not firing my cannon when I'm pulling up. That seemed a little weird. Yeah But anyways, there's some amazing bones here. Yeah. There's some really 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 awesome and rewarding aspects to this game it's Amazing skull and bones. I, I was yeah. 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 <laughs> But this game is also very punishing and you'd be prepared for downtime between turns yeah. I just think I think you need to know all of that going in I don't think that any of the things we proposed while they would speed up the game a bit mm -hmm. I don't think that they fix the the uh, the downtime. downtime between turns and stuff oh, like that. sure That's just because the mathing and I, I also think though is the, the being more like hey we, can you help exactly. me with this? Brings other people in the when it's not our turn. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, I don't mind downtime between turns when you have an interesting turn to do as well. Right, but when your turn's just like, I throw myself into a fort. <laughs> it's a real bummer when you've got nothing you can yeah. do on your turn. And yep. it's like, I waited 25 minutes for this. Yep. Uh, yep. Please go. And then I will hopefully be able to do something next time. Uh, you know, there is a little bit of get good, right? Like learn, do better. Right. Because uh, there are mistakes that I would not make. I would sure. not be out on my own that early in the game mm -hmm. the next time I play. Correct. I would stay closer to other people so that I at least Help can try, to, team up can a try to contribute mm -hmm. to, you know, at least have the option right. to participate in some battles and stuff. Lesson learned, uh, but still. Uh, but, you know, you get into all that. Uh, and, and it, I think if everybody's informed, this sounds interesting. If you're a fan of the original, you're probably going to like this. I know there's some things that are gone that you will see in some videos, like right. the initiative die, which sounded awesome. Yeah. I would love to see the initiative die because, parlay. again, that was my huge complaint mm -hmm. about the game so far was just the initiative system, mm -hmm. right? So having the initiative die and the way it levels up with you and things like that. Yeah, Incredible. I mean, it makes sense taking it out just because getting, uh, again, getting advantage on the royal ships just because of a die roll doesn't make sense. So, sure. so I get it. Um, you could surprise them. Right. Yeah, um, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Our two weapons. <laughs> but yeah, again, overall, even in the state this game is currently in, I'd give it a solid Jolly Roger up. It's Ooh. it's 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 good. It just, it's, it's difficult. Like, and yep. I don't mean hard, like, as in the difficulty of, like, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but you know what I'm saying? Not difficulty, like... It is hard, but like it is hard to play. Literally, just yeah. learning all the rules, going mm. through the rule book, learning the minutia of how everything interacts, yeah. understanding combat. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to get into. There's a high barrier to entry. Of yeah, yeah for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, it's a good way to say it. But, but I think the rewards are there uh, when mm -hmm. you if if this sounds good to you. Obviously, right? right? Yep. But you're also not going to throw, like, somebody whose favorite game is King of Tokyo. You're not going to throw them. <laughs> right. But if you like a game like Zia, you know, or Zaya, and you want to, you know, do a pirate theme. This, yeah. is, this is the only option? Yeah. And I don't think it's a bad option. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Right. I agree. I agree. Uh, I'd love to see how they, like, how, how the whole campaign out. goes. Because mm -hmm. the, the prototype box came with, like, a ton of envelopes. Yeah. A of, lot of. Of extra missions and stuff. Yeah. Um, Early on, though, just a couple that I looked at, I don't think they added enough, but again, prototype. Right. Uh, where, like, I want more interesting, like, right. like they should be, instead of just having, like, a card or two in there, they should have, like, extra tokens, right? right. You know what I mean? Like, oh, now we got these ships to deal and, with. Or, and with as hard as it is to kind of level up your ship, and then when you die, you lose some of that, I feel like you should just kind of keep that stuff mission yeah. to mission. You know, yeah. really well, I mean, but if you up. max out. Well, sure. You know, then right. in the future missions, then you just add more like, okay, well now we're spawning more ships. We're spawning harder ships. Right, but if I didn't max out and you did, now you're breaking the curve. Well, you just got to ask me to help Bob you. Bob only cares yeah. about himself and you know That's it. true. He's That's true. Ask me to help He's you. got no character. I'll help, I'll help you, Tim. <laughs> Bam! Yeah, there was a character track on this, so Bob can't win. Have fun up there. Uh, anyways, guys. Uh, but yeah, this is a good, this, hopefully, we complained a lot. Yeah. But... We, it's only because we care. Right. Uh, we see a lot of really good things in here, and so when when we get it, when we're passionate about right. a game, we right? We want it to be as best as it can be. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. We want to be honest and inform you guys. So. Also true. Yep, that's our job. And uh, I want to be a pirate. Arr. Arr. Anybody else got anything before we sign off? No, nope. I think we pretty much hit it. All right, guys. Uh, this has been the Pirate Republic, Africa Gambit. <laughs> that's such a. I want to say the Africa Gambit. Right. Or African Gambit? I don't know. That's not what it's called, though. 
So for the board game rundown, I've been Tim. Bob. I was the version Gorda. Dan. <laughs> you got me. We'll see you next time. <laughs>